So Stephen, thanks so much. I, I know you've always helped us internally uh, with, with teaching our engineers and teaching uh, everyone about certain concepts. I, I know we've been kind of doing this kind of series where, where, where you're like reading and then kind of synthesizing information from the book and then making a white paper. And uh, so I, I thank you for that. I know we're working through this book in some ways, uh, the, the zero to one, which we learned a lot more initially just because Peter Thiel spoke at USC. And so that kind of got us that kind of visibility on some of those concepts, but uh, thanks for, uh, for, for, for doing this. And I know we're on the, the people question now, but you can give everybody a little context. Yeah, yeah. So, so for those of you who are just tuning in, maybe this is the first video in the series you've seen. Um, so this is going to be the fourth one. So if you have a chance, feel free to check out the first three. Um, but the gist of this series is, so like Curling mentioned, uh, we do a lot of internal white papers. We have a culture of learning within focus. And so um, we're always trying to learn, trying to get better and, and you know, uh, internally trying to learn more about, you know, a lot of topics in entrepreneurship, you know, solving problems and whatnot. So uh, one of the, the books we've had some of our engineers read and some of our, you know, a founding team has been a book called Zero to One by Peter Thiel. And in that book, um, he talks a little bit about some seven questions that, that he says every business must answer. And some of the ideas behind these questions kind of resonate in um, ideas of success or failure within startups in general, right? There's the the theory behind some of these kind of transcends, you know, Peter Thiel's way of thinking. And, you know, you see a lot of it in, you know, a lot of, um, you know, materials, you know, videos and the ways that a lot of, I guess, uh, veteran entrepreneurs, seasoned entrepreneurs talk nowadays, right? From Jeff Bezos to Elon Musk to Steve Jobs and whatnot, right? So we wanted to be able to go through a series like this and share some knowledge, start the discussion and, uh, you know, look, dive into some of these questions. That's great. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll give the gist of this question. So we're, we're at the, the fourth question in that series of seven. So this question is called the people question, and it's do you have the right team? Now, if you've ever started a company um, or, you know, read books on, on self-help uh, entrepreneurship, like The Founder's Dilemmas uh, by Noam Wasserman or Good to Great by Jim Collins, you know that there's a huge impact a team can make, um, especially if you have the right team. Having the right team members and, and also having them in the right positions is crucial uh, for success, you know, in the startup space or, you know, in, in doing just about anything right as a group. Um, you know, Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, uses the analogy of, um, you know, people on a bus, right? It's one thing to put people on a bus, but it's also another thing to put them in the right seats on the bus, right? And in doing that is, and doing that is a very difficult task for, um, for a lot of people. Um, another kind of way to think about that is, uh, so you have the difference between engineers and, and salespeople. So salesmen, you know, executives, for instance, can be really great at doing things like raising capital, capital, securing government funding, you know, but but normally their expertise isn't in building great products like someone on the engineering end, right? And so on the other hand, we've seen numerous kind of big names in, in tech like today, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Steve Wozniak, that um, are kind of at the other end of that spectrum, right? Where, you know, some, um, I guess, entrepreneurs that are in line line are great at one thing and they also have shortcomings, right? So how do they know what position is great for them, you know, in, in their company and their venture? And so you have this idea of understanding, you know, strengths, weaknesses of members of your team and helping them get, you know, not only if they need to be on your team in general, but also being able to put them in the best position to succeed, right? The, the right seat on that bus, um, even if that means they currently, you know, whether they belong or not in your organization. And that's a tough decision to make. And, and it's a very, very tough, you know, hurdle to cross for a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah, Stevie, I, and I think the main question is, is there some things that you have learned about getting people in the, in the right seat in, 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 in that bus, that culture? Yeah, so um, I know, Curling, you have, you know, way more experience in this than I do, but, um, but I guess I'll, you know, I'll share my thoughts and we can transition maybe in, into your, you know, uh, thinking afterwards. But um, from my experience, a lot of it has been, you know, you have an, a level of trial and error involved, right? So there's one thing about a culture fit, right? You might interview somebody, um, you know, a prospective, you know, team member, engineer, someone that you want to hire. 
And you might think, wow, this person is a great culture fit for our organization. They have all these intangibles, you know, gels well with, with our, you know, our company, our people, you know, our mission, you know, what we're here for. But at the same time, you know, after that, there might be a trial and error trying to get them on, on the right seat on the bus, right? You might hire them in one thing and realize they're great at something else. And so they might have to, you know, move seats on that bus. Um, so in my experience, there's always some level of trial and error. Um, an analogy that, that I've also heard. So, so I was a college athlete and I'm currently, you know, on uh, training for the Olympic trials and a coach that I used to have used to use the analogy in athletics of sometimes it takes two to see one. And his, his way of thinking is that, you know, no matter what level of self-awareness you have, you might have a great level of self-awareness, you know, you, using the analogy as an athlete, uh, you know, you can think, feel what's happening right then at that given moment. But sometimes to be able to get the whole picture, you need some outside point of view, right? So you might have a great understanding of things you might be good at, things you might, you know, have weaknesses and whatever, but somebody you work with, a friend you know, you've known for years, a family member, you know, somebody you've been around, or maybe even a boss might have, you know, some understanding about your strengths and weaknesses that maybe you don't even know, right? That are, that are you know, beyond your level of, of current awareness. So sometimes it takes, you know, other people to, um, to give you the full picture of, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are to help you, you know, get to that point. Uh, that's, that's great. And I, I, I love that. Again, that kind of 360 view, right, on yourself, that assessment. Um, but we've always said, too, with Focus and with other groups I've been part of, but that you kind of hire uh, for culture first, then uh, that competency, right, on, on just learning and understanding things. And then last, you hire for that actual type of position. So if you actually needed someone who was like a CFO, it would be good. Yes, they have some financial literacy. They understand certain concepts. They even understand the, the, the aspect of strategy, right? But uh, we first wanted to make sure they're a good fit, that they kind of could, could hang out in the bus. <laughs> but I've even had it where we had, we had like one story where we actually had uh, talked to a, a founder before and they were having issues internally with the culture. And I asked the, the CEO, like, who do you really trust? And he said, no, I actually really trust my brother. He's in New York, I, I'm here in, in LA. I said, well, well, why don't you just ask your brother if you, if you wanted help? And we went a little bit deeper because said, well, I really need a CFO. I said, well, is your brother smart enough? Can he, you think he could actually handle it? He said, yes, he's, he's brilliant. Well, I think he actually could learn a little bit of the aspect of CFO. It actually changed the organization a lot, right? It helped the trust factor. He was a good culture fit. And his competency was, was at a level where he actually became a really great CFO, right? So that's, I think that's a really good analogy on, on one, how you can make sure it's culture first, then two, having the right person on the bus. Sometimes that is, is, is something, even someone could learn to some of those aspects, especially we found out later on that his brother had, a, uh, he did love numbers, right? He did that by default. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we look for those things too. So that's just, just, just one story, Stephen. That's awesome. Yeah, I know this is, this is a big question, a big hurdle for, for a lot of startups and entrepreneurs, especially those who have no experience in hiring, right? Or even just finding co-founder. Um, do you have any advice on, you know, maybe an entrepreneur that's trying to find a co-founder, you know, trying to, to find that right person to, that sit next, you know, to sit next to him on that bus? Yeah, I think all my experiences when I was younger, like my study group at the university, I, I always, always connected with them. We always would learn. It was kind of cultural learning having that study group. And so my study group really was my first startup that we actually had. I felt like I, I, I trusted them and things. Like that. So I say the people that are already in your circle already, that being a study group or that even like a, uh, I, I had people who, who uh, started a company and they, they all uh, played music together. Right. So they, 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 there was already this kind of culture of like jam session, music, collaboration, and they became a really great founding team. So I do look at your immediate circle, too, initially. And then the other one, part I've been finding out more and more is actually if, if you really need a, a technical co-founder or things like that, go to some of those type of meetups. I know there's a lot of things on Zoom now where, where there are going to be a lot of engineers there and you can actually see how they interact with people at these kind of meetups. Right. So, you know, we have that, uh, I guess, a lot of solopreneurs meeting me are not technical, but those are some ways maybe they could get maybe a technical co-founder. Yeah, yeah. Steve Jobs needed that Waziak, Right. So I think it's always important to understand that. Uh, see one, assess yourself what you need, but maybe go in those environments where some of those co-founders 
that would compliment you where they're at. So that's just a couple, couple, couple points. That's awesome. That's some great advice. <laughs> well, we're going to keep this kind of short and sweet before we head on to, on to the other, uh, other questions, you know, give, give everyone a little bite-sized content. So just to kind of wrap it up here, you know, if you have a chance, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Um, all the interactions we get with videos like this help push it out to more people. So you giving us that like, leaving that comment, sharing your thoughts, you know, we want to learn from you maybe as much as you want to learn from us, right? And sometimes people don't realize that. So if you have something to add, we'd love to hear it. And if you have a question, we'd love to hear that also. Um, so feel free to do that. But as always, we will see you in the next video.